and that all goes straight back into the sea. So like I said, all this has come from the, uh, the go-kart track, which is uh, incredible. I mean, just look how high the wall is for the sea to penetrate that. That must have been a very, very high tide. And welcome back to a brand new video. So today we're going to have a look near the uh, go-kart track because after Storm Ashley struck over the weekend, a lot of damage was caused in and around Blackpool with the light pool, etc. And there was reports that the go-kart track was underwater. So go and have a, a quick look and see if that's true and how bad the damage is. So come and join me on this uh, bit of a walk around. And uh, yeah, it was just near uh, the north side of Blackpool. So yeah, come and join me. So, like I said, we're just at the uh, north end of Blackpool and uh, we're just opposite the, uh, the cabin lift. Now, this one hasn't been in operation for several, uh, several months, years, I'd imagine. Uh, so, I think they're still working about the, uh, trying to get it working. Uh, I'm not too sure what the latest is on that one. So, yeah, just near the, uh, the cabin lift. And as we uh, venture down the stairs, we're going to have a, a look at this go-kart track. But just first of all, look at these uh, lovely views. Look at that. And how magnificent does that look? Wow. So yeah, we're gonna venture down. Like I said, we're gonna take these little, uh, this little path all the way down. Have a look at this uh, go truck, go kart track, shall I say? What's supposed to be uh, be completely underwater? So this is the uh, the view from the top, and you can see the reports what came in. Uh, that was completely accurate. Uh, what a shame. So this is a uh, flooded before in the past. I can't remember the last time it did flood after a storm, but you can see, you know, the whole lot is uh, underwater. So we're gonna have a venture down and uh, just have a bit of a closer look. So the little entrance I went down, unfortunately you can't get down, so we've had to come the, uh, the long way around. And uh, you can see, I'll, obviously I'll go a little bit closer later on, but you can see the water, the seawater pouring out of that go-kart track as it attempts to to drain itself and uh, like i said you know imagine when the the sea rises you know that will sort of see so imagine it's just uh draining whilst the tides out we're gonna have a, a closer look at that one so we just got to uh this look like the uh the top of the uh the walkway and you can see that huge pipe is draining all that water what's held in this arena and uh, I mean, well, you know, it's, it's been a few days now since the, uh, the storm hit. And just look at the amount of litres of water what has been pumped out, you know, every minute. So that's incredible what water this go-kart track does hold. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have a, like I said, a quick look at this, uh, this go-kart track because it is completely underwater and there's a, there's a few like sort of containers where they, uh, they keep the parts and all sorts. And uh, imagine, you know, all that is ruined. I mean, this would have been, you know, right up. Look at that. You can see probably where the tide has hit, the, uh, the white line. So it must have been very, very high. And uh, like I said, it is completely uh, saturated and well underwater, this one. Just looking back at the uh, the cabin lift, and you can see. Let's just uh, move the camera down a little. So you see that there's a window there, and you can see like the board what's sort of flown, flown out from uh, from that window, which uh, is totally exposed. All the uh, the guts inside. You can see the board just lying there, and like I said, that's uh, at the cabin lift. So that still hasn't been repaired. That'll be a bit of a imagine sort of walk along and they have access down, so that certainly needs to be repaired for any uh, other damage is caused by this one. And that's the, uh, the, uh, the lift. So this is just the, uh, the other side, you can see the, uh, the sea level, you know, would have been right up, coming up these stairs, you can see like a, a discarded little kid's scooter there. 
and all sorts of uh, rubble and everything. Like I said, these containers, I think there's uh, three of those. And, uh, you know, all the uh, spares and the, uh, the things would have been there. And it looks like they possibly would have been uh, completely saturated and ruined. And like I said, this is the, uh, the go-kart track in Bisbon, which is uh, a shame. So like I said, it's been several years since this has been flooded. Um, so, you know, it's just, it just shows how strong that storm would have been to breach these high walls. That's, uh, that's incredible. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna pop onto the, to the beach, have a look at this huge pipe, what's pumping the, uh, the amount of water out, uh, and then we'll move on. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a sad state to see, you know, but at least, you know, it's like self-repairing itself, shall I say, which is great, you know, so it's probably been a few days, or probably a few more days, and it'll be uh, drained and, I'd imagine, ready to use again. So yeah, we'll hop onto the beach and just have a look at this massive, great pipe. So it looks like the uh, tide is coming in, so I'm going to have to be uh, quite snappy about this one. But let's go and have a, a look at this. Like I said, imagine this will sort of stop pumping in the next sort of 40 minutes, hour, as the, uh, the tide rolls in. You can see the tide is certainly coming in, so like I said, we'll be quite snappy about this. and end up getting washed away. But yeah, this is the, uh, the huge pipe, what's uh, pumping um, all this water from the go-kart track and uh, like I said, it's amazing how it sort of self-repairs itself shall I say uh, I'm not sure if there's any like pumps or anything uh, what helps the water go but yeah just look at this and look at the amount of water what's uh, gushing out here look at that and that all goes straight back into the sea so like I said all this has come from the, uh, the go-kart track which is uh, incredible. I mean, just look how high the wall is for the sea to penetrate that. That must have been a very, very high tide. So yeah, it's, uh, like it's all rejoining, it's making its own way all the way down. Look at that. And, uh, it's here, it's uh, obviously gonna be rejoining, rejoining the sea. So yeah, we're gonna get back because of the tide gets in very, very quickly. So we're just back up the, uh, the top now and you can see it looks like nothing's changed. And it's just imagine the, uh, the amount of water what's uh, situated in that track. So like I said, we're back at the top. So we're gonna have a, a quick look around the, uh, the north side of, um, of Blackpool. So now there's quite a few hotels now, I've been, uh, some work's been carried out. So we're gonna have a quick look at those. And uh, yeah, so we'll keep going forward um, for now. So we're just near the, uh, the Genting Casino, the uh, Sheraton and the uh, Doric Hotel. You can imagine all the, uh, the views. Imagine how many people have been staring out the window at the top floor trying to capture the storm um, over the weekend. I mean, what, what views you've got you know, of the choppy sea it would have been fantastic. And also we've got this uh, Cabri showboat, and that's always a good one. Fantastic for, uh, like I said, for a bit of outdoor entertainment, and there'll be great meals in there. So we're gonna have a, a quick look at that one. Yeah, this is the, uh, the Cabri showboat, and uh, it's just situated in the, uh, the north side. It's got 12 giant TVs as well in this one. And you can see there's a sign on there, and he's saying only sort of two pound a pint. That's fantastic, so if you want a, a bit of a, a bit of a drink, two pound a pint. That is incredibly cheap. So this is another huge hotel. It's the uh, Royal Boston Hotel. And that's another huge, huge hotel. Look at the size of that one. And uh, let me know if you stayed in that one because this has been here for, uh, for many a year as well. Like most of these along the promenade, you know, like the Savoy and the Cliffs. They've been sort of here for years and years. And like I said, what magnificent views you would get, you know, just overlooking the sea. I mean, wow, that's something else. So yeah, move on a, a little further uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll probably think about ending the video, but we're gonna have a look at these hotels, what are being done up on the, uh, the front of the promenade. And you see that hotel there, that burned down several years ago. Uh, yeah, it's a bit sort of sketchy, shall I say. Uh, but yeah, all that's uh, left now 
is just vans, you know, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven vans. They just look like abandoned, you know, looks like a, a bit of a dumping ground for vehicles. So I'm not too sure what the uh, plans are for that, but at the moment, it's just like I said, a, a dumping ground for old vehicles. And just next to that uh, car park, shall I say now what it is, you can see there's a hotel there, just next to the uh, Maples Hotel. And you can see that's seen better days. I'm not too sure what's going on there. There's rubbish, there's uh, all sorts just sort of left in the corner and on the balcony. And it looks like that one could possibly be the uh, next to go. So I'm not sure if it's even open or anything. I don't know what's going on with that one at all. But again, you know, fantastic hotels, you know, all along the, uh, the stretch of the promenade on the north side. And looks like there's a, the Moorfield Hotel is now gone, um, which is just next to the Eclipse Hotel. And you can see that's all, uh, that's all being boarded up. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, like I say, it's a shame. It's another huge building. I imagine that'll be probably sort of made into like a care home or something. Um, yeah, another, another huge hotel. Look at that. How big that one is and imagine that like I said will be uh, made into a care home so we just approached the uh, the gin roundabout and this is uh, another great one you see the uh, spitfires right in the middle of the roundabout uh, imagine the sun might interfere a little uh, with the uh, the shots but yeah the spitfires are another fantastic one and we've got that uh, like a, a kitchen and bedroom so that's been gone many a year but it is uh, up for sale or up to let shall i say it's a yeah i don't know what they'll uh, end up popping in that one but yeah this is a uh, just near the uh, the gin roundabout i'll have a quick look at the uh, the spitfires because i mean they are amazing display look at that and like i said they do all sorts of uh, displays um, there we go just popped it in the center they do all sorts of uh, displays on this roundabout which is fantastic they all light up at night and again like i said that's the uh, the showroom you know it's that's been gone for years like i said that shop's select now so i wonder what will be become of that one so we're coming to a, a bit of a close in the video uh, i thought i'd just bring you a little update on these uh, huge hotels so it looks like there's a double one there as you see work has been uh, avidly going on over the months and that should be opened up you know we're probably sort of tail end of the year maybe next year and uh, we've got the uh, the belgrave care home um and also we've got the uh, the hotel next door to it so you see scaffolding is gone uh, gone up there and there's work commencing and uh, you know it's fantastic you know just the work what's going on to these old buildings which is great rather than popping new buildings up repair the old ones with the charm and the character so like i said well, i think what we're gonna do we're gonna have a walk through the jubilee gardens because we never have a walk through that because there's a bit of a story on the Salvation Army um, I want to just to, uh, to go through. So I'm going to have a head over to the Jubilee Gardens and I'll uh, just mention that very quickly. And just before we get there, you can see the, uh, the sea, it's all coming in now, the tide. And it's a very popular attraction for fishing along the promenade. It's been done for hundreds and hundreds of years. And you can see all the uh, cars down there lined up, uh, getting the tackle ready, the rods ready hoping to catch it and they, they you know it's, this starts from uh, from like back up you know sort of midway to uh um like the, the north pier and it goes all the way to cleveland you know the amount of fish fishermen shall i say who are hoping to uh, to catch something uh and like i said it's been going on for hundreds of uh, hundreds of years you know so a lot of fish have been uh, pulled from the sea so yeah we'll head on to the uh, the jubilee gardens and we'll have a quick talk about the uh, salvation army so we're just approaching the uh, Jubilee Gardens as we speak. And yeah, just a bit of information in regards to the Salvation Army. Now it's just turned uh, on Sunday, 140 years old, which is absolutely incredible. I mean, the amount of services and the uh, help they provide, um, it really is um, amazing. And it was actually formed or founded, shall I say, in London's East End in 1865 by William and Catherine Booth. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, like I said, the amount of people it's helped over the years. And it includes more than 650 community churches and uh, social 
um, offering, you know, sort of support and just uh, that ear to listen to. So yeah, big shout out to the Salvation Army and what a fantastic job they do. Um, it's truly incredible. So yeah, I think we're gonna come to a bit of a close in the video. Um, if you haven't been to here, the Jubilee Gardens is fantastic, lovely and peaceful. Um, it all sort of lights up at night as well here. They've got, you know, sort of little stones and all sorts of things. Um, it really is incredible. So if you've even been to the uh, Jubilee Gardens, just near the uh, Gin Roundabout, um, like I said, certainly, certainly have a visit, certainly worth it. So yeah, until next time, take care of yourselves and uh, it's a bye from me. Bye-bye.